During the Republican era, a train station received a mysterious train that was moving incredibly slowly. It took an hour for the train to come to a stop upon arrival. After the train stopped, no one disembarked, but a strong and foul odor permeated the air. A group of staff approached the train, unprepared for what awaited them. They were greeted by rusty doors oozing blood and the unimaginable horrors inside. Meanwhile, another train departed, its passengers oblivious to the events about to unfold. One could say they temporarily escaped a calamity. As the train continued its journey, it passed by a sprawling garbage dump, untouched and filled with wriggling creatures. Please be advised, the following events may be disturbing. If you are not afraid, then please continue with me. As the train traveled, the passengers began to hear strange noises alongside the regular train sounds. Faint sounds emanated from the pipes above their heads, incessant and unrelenting. One person grew irritated and struck the ceiling with a cane. This single strike caused a great disaster. The ventilation shaft was punctured, and rats began to fall like rain, hitting the people below. In an instant, one person was engulfed by the rats. The rats turned on the humans, devouring them as food. Chaos erupted in the train car. The military warlord in the front disregarded rescue efforts and ordered a retreat. Others panicked and fled. Some were reluctant to leave their belongings and met their demise as a result. Before long, the train car was filled with rats and the remains of those who fell victim to their voracious hunger. The last survivor managed to tightly seal the door. But would that stop the rats? He ran to the next train car, warning the passengers about the rat disaster, urging them to flee. However, people were skeptical and indifferent. Who hasn't seen a few rats before? Laziness and apathy rendered them numb. The man could only gather his family and focus on saving themselves. As expected, the rats formed a massive army and surged towards the people. Those who were laughing moments ago were immediately overwhelmed. Unable to climb back up, they could only be engulfed by the tidal wave of rats. Not only on the ground, but the rats also attacked from the ventilation pipes. At this point, most of the people who wanted to escape were already too late. In the narrow train carriages, people ran madly screaming and wailing, pushing and trampling each other. There was no trace of decency left. Some tried to close the doors, saving as many as they could before shutting them. But humans couldn't outrun the rats. Helplessly, they could only close the door. They continued running forward but found that the door ahead was locked by heartless individuals. There was no other choice but to open the skylight and climb out from the top of the train. Before everyone could make it up, the rats broke through the glass. The last person fell into the sea of rats. The remaining people stood on the train's roof cautiously moving forward. The roof behind them was also densely packed with rats. When they were about to reach the first train carriage, the train was unexpectedly detached by the soldiers in front. Fortunately, they managed to jump across at the last moment, barely surviving. The survivors inside the train carriage were still trembling with fear. Some started to attack the soldiers, accusing them of callousness and disregarding lives. The enraged crowd was quelled by a gunshot from the warlord, silencing them. At that moment, a man suddenly fell to the ground and couldn't get up. People checked on him and discovered bite wounds on his hands and neck caused by the rats. A female doctor pointed out that it could be Yersinia pestis, an infectious disease. This revelation threw the train carriage into chaos once again as people checked their own bodies, finding wounds on many of them. In the midst of panic, the doctor's father stepped forward. He knew of a highly effective treatment for the infectious disease available at the hospital in the county ahead. Soon, the train stopped at the next station and the doctor set off with a pair of volunteers to search for the medicine. However, upon arriving at the county, they discovered it had turned into a living hell. There was no one in sight, and the air was filled with a putrid stench. The area was littered with ruins and devastation. In the open shops, there were people hanging dead. The most horrifying sight was a small alley filled with dozens of bodies scattered in all directions. Where were the rats? Finally, before reaching the hospital, they spotted the group of rats, all huddled in the shadows, numbering in the tens of thousands. The rats noticed the humans and wanted to attack but hesitated in front of the sunlight. Fortunately, these mutated rats were afraid of light. They climbed up the nearby steel frames and passed over the rats. However, halfway through their climb, the weather suddenly changed, and dark clouds quickly filled the sky. Oh no, without the threat of sunlight, the rats climbed up, and the group of people had no choice but to jump down from the steel frames and flee in panic. The swarm of rats descended upon them and the people ran for their lives. They finally got into the hospital and locked the rats out. The hospital was dark and eerie. The highly effective medicine was stored in the underground warehouse. They had to venture in with torches, step by step. The most feared creatures were indeed waiting for them there. The underground warehouse was the rat's lair, filled with them everywhere. It was a disaster. However, based on the old doctor's observation, the rats here were in the lactation period and not highly aggressive. They might be able to take the risk. The old doctor moved cautiously and finally found the medicine. They collected it and started to make their way back. 
However, they inadvertently alarmed the rats along the way. It was time to escape again. They ran out of the hospital. And outside, the old doctor's daughter called for the others to get in the car. She drove and raced against the countless swarm of rats, crashing through numerous obstacles along the way. The two men in the backseat were tossed around, but they managed to escape the scene. The group returned to the train station, but the joy of survival vanished. The place was now filled with corpses, both human and rat. It seemed a tragedy had just occurred. The girl's legs weakened, and she ran towards the train carriage, thinking her sister and brother were dead. But then, the train doors opened, revealing her family. It was a relief. The last survivors were still inside the carriage. The sky darkened again as the horde of rats surged from the horizon. The old doctor carried the antidote, ready to board the train when suddenly someone rushed out and snatched the medicine box, knocking him unconscious. It was the despicable official from before, covered in blood, with a deranged expression. He held the medicine, preparing to run. Another man rushed out and tackled him. After a fierce struggle, the man managed to retrieve the medicine box and threw it to the old doctor. The swarm of rats had already arrived. The official held a small bottle of medicine, crawled to his long dead son's side. And then, the father and son, who had callously disregarded lives, were engulfed by the rats. At this moment, the old doctor had already been pulled onto the train by his daughter, while the man chased after them from behind. His leg injury was too severe, and he couldn't catch up. Although his own fate seemed hopeless, he stood straight in his place, ready to meet his death calmly. The old doctor turned to look at his daughter. He had previously told her to stay away from unreliable men. But now, he told her that the man chasing them was a good man. They used the medicine they had obtained at the cost of many lives to treat the infected people on the train. Before long, the train suddenly came to a halt. They looked out of the window and saw a detached train car blocking the tracks ahead. Meanwhile, the swarm of rats surged towards them, as if ready to devour the entire land. This time, those who were previously divided suddenly united. Bandits, soldiers, civilians, nobles everyone joined forces and managed to push the train car aside. There was a bandit on the train who hesitated to act. He had done many evil deeds in his life. But now, he decided to sacrifice himself for the greater good. He strapped himself with explosives, rushed into the field, attracting the rat swarm to attack him, and then detonated himself. He used the most heroic way to buy time for others to escape. The group returned to the train. But amidst the chaos, the conductor noticed that the switch on the tracks hadn't been set, which meant the train would head towards a dead end. The old doctor, in his final moments, turned back to reset the switch. However, as soon as he set it, the poorly maintained switch snapped back into place. The old doctor had to make a difficult choice. He held onto the switch tightly, ensuring the entire train passed by. But in doing so, he missed his chance to escape. As he ran towards the train, the horde of rats was already closing in. His two daughters screamed desperately, but they could only watch their father fall further behind. The old doctor did not cry. While running, he shouted his last instructions to his daughters. He told his eldest daughter not to be too obedient and to be a bit more selfish. To his second daughter, he said not to be too strong and to be more forgiving. After saying this, he stopped his footsteps, waved his hand, and bid farewell to his daughters. People often divide during peaceful times and unite during times of crisis. They develop hatred when their desires are fulfilled and feel nostalgic when they lose. May we not always strive for nobility at the last moment. May we infuse tenderness into every moment of our lives. Perhaps only then can we find peace and gradually fade away. I am Movie Lover. Feel free to subscribe. And see you next time.